Hi, I'm Liv and welcome back to the Book Nook. Hey guys, so today is time for my July wrap up part one. I'm trying to remember what month I'm in. I don't know if I'm coming or going at the minute, but it is July and this is the first part of my wrap up. So the first book that I've read this month is one that has already appeared on this channel in my books of the year so far and that is Sylvia Brown Riggs Pages For You. Now you've probably seen this one all around on Twitter and booktube and wherever else you could possibly see a book at the moment and for good reason because it's bloody brilliant. It's the story of Flannery and Anne. Now forgive me for not remembering exact details like ages and things because it was a couple of weeks ago I read this now and I am very tired. Flannery goes to college in America and on her first day there she's um, eating a jelly omelette which just sounds in a diner and she sees this woman drinking coffee and falls in lust or in love with her at first sight and this book just sort of charts their relationship now you know from the beginning that it's doomed you know from the outset it's in the blurb and it's in like the first couple of pages that it's doomed but it's just absolutely gorgeous it reminded me a lot of carol and i said this in my my books of the year um, video which I will link down below um, for a bit more about this one that I don't want to just it would be really easy to just go oh it's Carol for the modern era and it kind of is but what I loved about this book as well is that it's quite timeless as much as it is of its time you can't quite put your finger on when that is it feels maybe like 70s 80s you know there's no mentions of like mobile phones or anything like that or emails but apart from that it feels like it could happen whenever which is something that I very much enjoy in a book if you have read Carol by Patricia Highsmith or watch the film and enjoyed it, I would recommend this one. But you know what, if you're just a lover of gorgeous writing, read this one. It's written in really sort of short chapters. Like each chapter is only like, I think the longest one is something like four pages long. So like two, three pages. And you just sit there and you just tear through this. I did it in two sittings and I only stopped because I was falling asleep. I would have just kept reading and devoured it in one sitting if I hadn't started it at like nine o'clock and had work the next day. So it's an absolutely gorgeous book in terms of sort of talking about love. Oh, it's just lovely. But it is really, really gorgeous and I'm really hoping to read Pages for Her, which is a sequel which has been released this year, hence the re-release and the re-jacketing of this one. So yeah, Pages for You by Sylvia Brown Rigg, thoroughly recommend. And Pages 94 and 95, whew. Then I read the first novel by one of my favorite authors. Now, if you've been watching for the few months I've even been doing this, you guys will know that I love Yuri Herrera. I first read Transmigration of Bodies a couple of years ago and was just absolutely bowled over by it. And I was putting off reading his first book, Signs Preceding the End of the World, purely because there wasn't a third one and I didn't want to have finished reading Yuri Herrera. Does anyone else do things like that? I don't know. But then Kingdom Cons came out this year and, and other stories were lovely enough to send me a copy and I read that one recently and then I thought, okay, you know what? I'm gonna read his first one. So Signs Proceeding the End of the World is about a young girl called Makina who is Mexican and travels over into America to look for her brother who traveled over a few years ago to try and reclaim some land that they were supposed to have been given. Um, it is still gorgeous. The writing, the translation, uh, Lisa Dillman's translations are just spot on as far as someone who, you know, doesn't know about translations can, can say. Again, much of this I talked about in my Books of the Year video because Kingdom Cons is one of my Books of the Year so far. Um, so Science Presenting to the End of the World isn't the best of the three. You can tell the development of Yuri Herrera's writing from Science Proceeding the End of the World through Transmigration of Bodies to Kingdom Cons. It's similar themes, it's similar musicality. That musicality is still there, the sort of slight fairy tale, slight, it's not fairy tale. I wanna say magical realism, I think I do mean that, but it's not even that. It's, it's like a slight off kilter sense the whole way through, that reality is not quite as straightforward, which of course it isn't. So in that sense, it's off kilterness is its accuracy. See what happens when I try and sound clever, I get all, mixed up with me words. Now don't get me wrong, I don't want it to sound like I didn't enjoy this book, because I absolutely did. And as I say, the progression of his writing becomes apparent when you go back to book one. Um, the themes that link it still, you know, as loud as ever. Um, but there's a sharpness to Transmigration of Bodies and Kingdom of Cons in particular that I think has just sort of been developed through from this book. So Yuri Herrera, as I say, he's one of my favorite authors. So I wouldn't say I was like, oh, I guess I was slightly disappointed by this one, but it was his debut novel, so 
Then I read a couple of graphic novels so far this month, and the first one that I read was Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. Now, I haven't done my <laughs> graphic novel video yet, but it is gonna happen, it is gonna happen. And you will know probably though, from having talked about them in my wrap ups uh, previously, that I'm a huge fan of Lumberjanes. Now I have only read volumes one and two so far, because it was just one of those things again where I don't wanna, I could have so easily gone out and got like three, four, five, six and sat and read them all in one go and then I'd have no more Lumberjanes to read. So I'm pacing myself. Hmm, I know, it's unfamiliar, isn't it? Me pacing myself, doing a sensible thing. So I thought to get my dose of Noelle Stevenson's humour and, and illustrations and sort of things, I would go with Nimona, which has been much talked about and much loved and it is really, really good, guys. It's like really good. Like, if you like good books, this be a good book that you might like, hmm? It's basically about a sidekick, Nimona, who is more sort of villainous than the villain that she is sidekicking for. But there's more to it than that, and it's so much about, like, belonging and sort of family and friendship and how you're sort of treated shapes you and sort of upending assumptions about characters. You know, obviously it's a book that takes the sort of perspective of the villain and the sidekick. So you're kind of thinking, okay, well, he's not actually going to be a particularly villainous villain. You know, he's not like an anti-hero. Well, he is, but he isn't. Oh, I don't know, I'm so tired. Basically, it's really cute. It's not quite what I was expecting. It doesn't go the way I was expecting. I thought it was just going to be sort of like a collection of comic books about, you know, jinx and japes that a sidekick and a villain get up to. Um, but it goes sort of further than that in terms of, as I say, belonging and who you really are and friendship. So I really would urge you to check this one out. I love Noelle Stevenson's stuff, you know, both Nimona and Lumberjanes have just been such a joy to read. They say something about people, about friendship, bonds, and they're really funny and they're really cute. So Nimona, go read it guys, yeah. And then the next graphic novel I read is actually a graphic novel for the nine to 12 age group. Now it's one that I had not heard of at all, but obviously working for Waterstones, every month we have a Waterstones Loves title and this month it was Roller Girl by Victoria Jameson. And it is a gorgeously cute and adorable graphic novel aimed at 9 to 12 kids. So it's about a girl called Astrid who wants to play roller derby. Play roller derby? Do roller derby? Compete in roller derby? Learn roller derby. She wants to roller derby. Yeah. And she assumes that her best friend, uh, Nicole, wants to as well. They go and see um, a roller derby with Astrid's mum and Astrid is like blown away and assumes that Nicole is as well and assumes they're going to go on this summer camp together and it doesn't quite pan out because Nicole wants to go to a ballet camp that happens at the same time. I think if I had had this book to read when I was like, you know, 8 to 11, 13, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with the age range there. I'm just going with it. But if I had had this book to read when I was younger, I would have learned so much. I don't know, it just said something so important, I think, for... I was just, I was going to say for girls of a certain age, for both, but I think particularly for girls as well, and, and that is something that it deals with, you know, very well. There's like hardly any male characters in this, and they're very kind of, you know, whatever. They're just incidental. It's a book about female power and perseverance and skill and athleticism and friendship and family. I think it's like properly important. It's not one that's sort of, you know, she wants to do roller derby and it turns out she's absolutely incredible at it. And it's not like that. It's it's more like, you know, real life. It's falling over a lot and getting hurt and learning how to deal with that in a myriad of ways. So Roller Girl by Victoria Jameson, I think is just absolutely adorable anyway. For me as a, you know, 25 year old girl, I read it and I was like, Okay, I'm clumsy as hell and I don't really want to do roller derby, but there was a lot with Astrid that I sort of identified with. As an adult, like, just read it. I'm being really coherent again, aren't I? Like, just read it, just read it. And then the third graphic novel that I've read so far this month is a really interesting one, and that is Dave Chisholm's Instrumental. Now, I think I've said it the same way I said it in the last video when Dave Chisholm told me that I said it just about right. I think I just said it wrong the second time. Dave Chisholm, Chisholm, how? But Dave Chisholm is a jazz musician, an award-winning jazz musician, and he's written this graphic novel. And what I didn't realise when I hauled this and when I bought it was that it's not just a graphic novel. There is also an album that goes alongside it to listen to while you are reading the graphic novel, which I thought was a really interesting thing to do because it is obviously, it is a graphic novel about jazz. It's about a guy who, he plays in a jazz band with his mates in his mate's flower shop and he's getting a bit sort of disheartened by it. He's getting disheartened by 
how few people come and listen and how how it's all sort of going and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere and he gets really sort of downhearted and then this guy um, gives him an old trumpet and it looks like a pretty sort of rusty rubbish old trumpet but then it turns out to be like this magical trumpet that will sort of bring people from miles around and all of a sudden he's playing to huge crowds but people keep dying every time he plays it and he sort of goes into denial about it and then he's chased by some guys who want to get this trumpet back. There is a sort of like slightly religiously cult element to it which I wasn't sort of expecting but I guess, you know, it's some enchanted magical trumpet that had to be somewhere it came from and someone who wants it back, otherwise there's not much point to the story. But yeah, I was just sort of a bit surprised by that. And the, the, the illustrations really are absolutely gorgeous and they're in black and white. So when you read this, if you do listen to the album alongside it, and I, I sat there for sort of five, ten minutes trying to decide, do I or don't I? Because there is a song for each chapter, so there's seven chapters, and there is a song for each of them. And I was just a little bit sort of dubious, and it was the one thing I found when I was going along. By, by and large, I found it a positive experience reading the graphic novel while listening to the album. But by about halfway through, the problem becomes apparent as to if your reading speed matches up with the speed of where the music thinks you're at. And I then found it, I started to find it not quite a distraction, but I was constantly listening, reading and listening to the music thinking, okay, am I, am I at where they think I'm at? So like from the off, press play and start reading, it works perfectly. But then I don't know if the tracks are meant to be, you know, slightly longer than the chapters. So I did find myself, especially for like the first two or three chapters, I would finish reading about a minute or so before the song had finished. So I would sit and I would listen to the jazz. And it's, it's really good, it's really good jazz, guys. It's good jazz, says the person who knows nothing about jazz. As an album, it is really good. And as a kind of atmospheric background music to getting on with stuff, I've been using it again since. Um, but yeah, I'd say through the sort of second half of the graphic novel, I got a little bit, am I at the right place in the music? It feels like it is the right place. I don't know whether it's just me going, is, am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? And I guess really, you know, any kind of multimedia type text that plays with something else that goes alongside it will sort of come up against that and, and everybody's reception of that will be slightly different. People who, with, e with a graphic novel, spend, you know, moments pouring over each individual one. I mean, I do to a degree, but there was only so much I could stare at each individual illustration, you know? But as a concept, it was really, really interesting and I did really enjoy it. And as I say, I mean, you look at these illustrations and they are absolutely gorgeous. These black and white illustrations, gorgeously illustrated. The music that goes with it is gorgeous. I think maybe it's just one of those things that you have to discover for yourself as a reader when you're reading it, if you read it alongside the text. No, if you read it alongside the music, sorry. Your own sort of reading speed and how you deal with that, how you deal with any leftover stuff, because some of the tracks then felt like shorter than the chapters. Yeah, Instrumental by Dave Chisholm, a really interesting take on graphic novels and music, and a really, really interesting blend of the two that I would thoroughly recommend checking out and seeing for yourself how you get on with it. Time to caffeinate. I like to do creepy eye contact when I caffeinate. How long can I not blink for? A lot just went on in my face in one go there. So part of the reason that I read uh, the th sort of three graphic novels in a row there is because I was reading another book at the same time that, okay, let's just talk about it. I don't know how I'm gonna talk about this. The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I've never read any Donna Tartt before. And a couple of people have sort of said to me like, it's their favorite book or they really, really loved it. So I was like, okay, okay. And I'm just not sure what I think of it. I mean, essentially it's a story about um, a group of kids at college, well not kids, you know, they're young adults at college, they're studying Greek classics, and some of them get into like this weird bacchanal thing and a guy dies and then things sort of spiral from there. And I'm not gonna sort of spoil things because if you do wanna read it fair enough. I just found it very, it didn't seem quite self-aware enough for me as a book that was about a bunch of rich, posh, white students who think nothing of spending money and like murder and stuff and I, I know I know that they are all meant to be horrible people and they are but I just but I didn't I didn't put it down there wasn't really ever a point where I thought of giving up on it there were a couple of points where I thought oh, I might just leave it and come back to it it's certainly not a book I loved but it's definitely not a book I hated the writing is it is good writing but it's one of those that takes about 20 words where 10 well, like, five words would be fine. Ten, I can deal with. Twenty, thirty, sometimes I'm like, okay, just... 
Like, I get that the characters are intelligent. I get that you're intelligent. I don't know. You know when you get told by enough people that a book is really good and you don't want to... You don't want to... I'm a people pleaser. But like, I don't want to disagree with them. And I know this book is meant to be very good. Yeah. I just... I don't really know where I'm at with this book. I think for me it was kind of like a bit forgettable. I'm sitting down to do this now and I'm sort of refreshing myself with these books as I go along. And then I got to this one and was like, oh yeah, I read that one. I think they're interesting characters in in a sense and the dynamic between them is interesting but for me a lot of the more interesting characters and the more interesting dynamics were the ones that never got explored and again maybe that's the point you know maybe I'm just being really dense and that is entirely possible but I just didn't mm, not quite sure on this one it's one that I think my immediate all right it was like a week ago I finished it but my immediate and semi-immediate, i.e. now, feelings about will be very different to how I feel about it six months, a year down the line. Talk to me about this one, guys. Like, I know Amy over at Shout Amy loved this book, and I know Layla, who I worked with, loved this book, but I just don't know how I feel about it. And I just, I don't like being on the fence, and I don't wanna be on the fence. I'm kind of like around the fence. I'm like around the fence by a gate, and I keep kind of like opening the gate and just walking around, and I don't. So yeah, Secret History by Donna Tartt. Didn't love it, didn't hate it, read it. The next book I read is a funny one. <laughs> You'll see what I did there. It's A Horse Walks Into a Bar by David Grossman. This book, of course, won the Man Booker International Prize uh, this year. And I recently read, not recently, it was a couple of months ago now, uh, Falling Out of Time by David Grossman, which was a very strange book, but absolutely gorgeous, really captivated me. It was a book about sort of grief and it was written almost like a play, poemy thing, and it was gorgeous. So I didn't think this was gonna be exactly the same as that, but it essentially is about a guy, um, a comedian who doing a show, a stand-up show, and it's like his descent into madness. The audience are like, what the hell am I watching? Because he starts talking about his life and his history and his past, and it's all quite painful and tragic. And then it's like, oh, is he dying? And it's just, hmm. Again, it's not one I could say I enjoyed, but I don't think you're supposed to enjoy it. The point is that you as a reader, I think anyway, are supposed to be like a member of the audience. And the main, a lot of the narration from it is from the point of view of a, a, of a guy that um, knew the comedian when he was younger. And he gets a call from him out of the blue to come and watch this show. And he's like, okay. So you kind of feel a little bit like him, like why am I there watching it? And then you feel like a lot of the audience, like some of the audience walk out, some of the audience get really angry. There is quite an economy of language actually, as I'm thinking about it. I'm, I'm thinking of all the places where I thought, okay, this is meandering now, this is repeating. It's like, well duh, that's the point of it. The point is this guy is on stage, essentially having like a bit of an existential crisis of where his life is at and where it's come from. It's not a book you will enjoy. It's not a book you will go, skipping about raving about well i don't know you might do but it's not it's not a skippy happy book it's a quite serious book but then it is funny in some places because he's a stand-up comedian and he does do some jokes and you know something quite funny and the responses are funny of the audience and so it's translated from the hebrew as well and i've not read many books translated from hebrew and it just has this really like bold brash punchy tone which i did like it is very unflinching in all sorts of ways i would say give it a go if you've been sort of eyeing it up and thinking like one man book international what's it going to be like it is quite like yeah it's serious and heavy but you know has a lot of man book type stuff is i don't know but it is it is an enjoyable read no it's not it's not an enjoyable read but it's a read that you will remember and there is a lot to get out of it and a lot to talk about i think and the concept is a very interesting one you know it's just with a the exception of, you know, a bit of a flashback from the, the sort of other narrator talking about when he called him up and asked him to come along to the show. All of the action takes place in this 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 nightclub for this comedy club and you only go somewhere else when Dovale wants you to go somewhere else and he takes you with him and he keeps you there until he comes back to the room and then you can be back in the room too but then if we're going, we're going again and if we're still there, we're still there. So he's very much, you do get sort of captivated, it much like the members of the audience who don't leave and can't look away. It's it's a bit sort of like car crash television. This is sort of like an element of voyeurism, I think. Also an element of like seriousness and dealing with how you are as a kid versus how you are now. I don't know, I'm rambling again now. Um, but yeah, Horse Walks Into a Bar by David Grossman. Definitely a very interesting book, a very interesting experience. So I'd be interested to see if any of you have read this one. What did you think of A Horse Walks Into a Bar by David Grossman? So I haven't read that much so far this month. It does feel like I was reading The Secret History forever. So that might have something to do with it. 
but also I had my week's holiday from work and I didn't actually do, I haven't actually done like much reading. I find that when I have a week off from work, a lot of it's actually spent going, oh shit, here's all the stuff that I haven't been doing while I've been at work. And also just been like chilling and having some holiday time with mates and I went to Ikea and bought a load of stuff like this throw, which I think when I got it home, I realized, I think, is that the one that Lauren in the books? Didn't you have that one for Harry Potter reading night? Cause it's Hogwartsy. <laughs> and I got a few other throws and a few other bits and I was tempted to do like an Ikea haul video, but I was like, no, you know what, it's too far from now, but I will show you. These coasters, I really like these coasters. I'm really sad, I know, but they're like coasters that cup the cup. I'll show you. There's a nice mini coffee cup that I got from Tiger the day after I went to Ikea. I love me some Scandinavian tat. Not tat, it's quality. Tiny mug, coaster that cups the cup. It like sits in there and it looks, and you can, but yeah, so I bought some cute coasters and some cute throws and, okay, maybe I will just show you some stuff. It's a cute vase. It's like a hexagon vase. It's like a little spaceship. That lives in one of the little coasters. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's all I'm gonna show you because that's all that's in reach. Oh my God, I totally lied. It's not the only thing that's in reach. So I wasn't gonna get this. I was being really good but um, I'm blaming Emily for this entirely because she bought one for her friend and I hadn't seen them. And then I saw them and... There's a pillow with black cats on it. So yeah, I got a pillow with black cats on it. But that was the only other thing in reach. Oh no, wait, it's not. I got a lint roller. <laughs> I have a cat, I need a lint roller. And I have also picked out a chair. Okay, so like I only came out of Ikea having not spent very much and I'd been like quite restrained for me, but I feel I may end up going back there quite soon. But yeah, that's that's some hauling, both books and other. I am currently reading at the moment um, Swing Time by Zadie Smith. Now I'm really not very far through this at all because I started reading it on like Wednesday and then yeah, I went to Ikea and I've just had a weekend and not a lot got done. I am back at work now with a few days off um actually having some physio for me feet and that seems to be like i need to be walking on my toes more it's also my back as well as my feet apparently physio reckons like my back muscles aren't very strong from the waist down i'm dead that's what she said not dead from the waist down obviously that's very flippant not at all what i mean basically my muscles are weak from the waist down and my feet hurt and my pain receptors and sensitivity are like all over the place so all my body can concentrate on is the pain so I need to be doing some other stuff to give my body something else to think about, behave and yeah do some sort of back strengthening things and I've got like magic tape on my feet which is like weird and magic. So yes as per usual with any of my hauls, no it's not even a haul is it, it's a wrap up, oh my god I'm useless today. Okay so this has been a book rack up, rack up. This has been a book wrap up for July and an Ikea mini haul thing where I just rant. A lot of ranting. You love it really. So as per usual, any of the books that I have wrapped up, not hauled, wrapped up, feel free to talk about what you thought about them because that's the rule. With the hauls, I'm like, no, unless you've... So it's a wrap up. So I want to hear your thoughts on the books that I've read. If you've read them, particularly, as I say, I would love to hear some thoughts and have a bit of a chat about The Secret History by Donatar. Am I being sort of totally dense with it? Is it just something that was maybe the wrong book at the wrong time? I don't know, what are your thoughts on Secret History? Because it seems to be one that everybody absolutely loves or loathes and I'm just, I'm not sure where I am. It's just a bit of a meh book. Um, and A Horse Walks Into a Bar as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that one. I think it's an interesting concept. So yes, check out uh, some of those books. I will link down below to my Books of the Year uh, video. That's the thing that we're doing now with vid videos. That's what, that's what we do. Video, I will link that down below so I, you can see me talking a bit more about pages for her and pages for her, pages for you. Pages for her is the second one, guys, come on. Pages for you and Kingdom Cons and my other four books of the year. Four? Five? How many did I choose? Who am I? The next video that will be coming up will be my July part one haul, which, no, you know what? I'm trying to be good, okay? I want to get a chair, I want to get an Ikea chair, and I want to move out, so I need to be saving money, so I'm going to try not to buy, oh god, 
No, because I'm about to say this and I've already broken it. I was gonna say I'm gonna try not to buy any more books for July, but like... Okay, three of the books that sat there waiting to be hauled, I bought before I decided I wasn't gonna buy any more books, okay? The same is not true of the other five. It's better than heroin, right? I'm gonna go get coffee. I'm really bad at goodbyes. I don't, I'm really bad at goodbyes as a human, as a person, as a human person, I'm bad at goodbyes. So go read some books. Talk to me about books. Okay, I'm actually going now. Talk to me about the books um, and I will, and have a little look at some links I put down there. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time. This has been a disaster. They're all turning into unmitigated disasters. I seem to be getting worse as a booktuber. Yeah, bye.